Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Smart and Vinyl, where we're going to talk a little records, a little music, and a whole lot of meh. So, thanks for joining me tonight on this episode. And tonight's record review stems from two things that happened to me this week. Um, one being, a friend of mine asked a question, and he says, uh, why don't you review any records that I've actually heard of? Like, why do you review all these bullshit records? Um... I don't think they're bullshit. I'm trying to expose you to something new and something you haven't heard of before. You know, like, do you really need me to review a record you've heard? Like, let me see. Oh, perfect example right here. Okay. Really? Do you need me to review this record for you? Do you have you never heard of this band before? You know, are you really going to make me review Seven and the Fucking Ragged Tiger because you've never heard it before? Although, I do like that music plus price tag anyways you you don't need me to review this you've heard it a million times and I've heard other people review it but I do take requests so you know if I have to I guess I will review this album so let me know I guess eventually I will so anyways so that happened this week and the second thing that happened was I got an invitation to my high school reunion I know. Hilarious. So anyways, let's get reviewing this record. Um, So because of both of those, I'm going to review Morrissey. And I know you're like, what? Morrissey's still alive. I go, I know. And he's still somewhat relevant and, you know, everything in this century. But I figured, one, a lot of you probably haven't heard this album. And two, the big hit on this album was Alma Mater. So it kind of talks about high school. So there we go. Anyways, um, let's talk a little about Morrissey, shall we? So in case you don't know who Morrissey is, um, he was a singer of the Smiths. And then he had a long and very fruitful solo career. Um, you know, I know a lot of people hate Morrissey, especially if your name is Brian Matheny. But you know, I I, I love Morrissey. Sorry. Um, so let, let's talk Morrissey. Um, this is maladjusted his album from 1997 um this album did hit number eight on the chart um and this is probably his most dated sounded album in his catalog um it sounds very late 90s and i'm not saying it's a bad thing i'm not saying it's a bad album but it does sound very dated i mean look the cover is a very dated looking you know none, none of his other covers look like this they're always like some kind of dead movie star you've never heard of or some poet but um you know, it's very night nice. Like, he's very cute on the back. He's like, oh, hello, ladies. Or, I'm sorry, he's like, oh, hello, gentlemen. Uh, anyways, so, um, maladjusted, let's talk about it. So, 1994 was a really big year for Morrissey. Um, you know, a lot of acclaim for Vauxhall and I. And then a lot of meh acclaim for 95's Southpaw Grammar, which I love Southpaw Grammar. But anyways, um... 96 rolled around and it was just kind of a shitty year. Um, he left the David Bowie tour. Um, in case you didn't know, Morrissey toured with uh, David Bowie and left because Bowie was being an asshole. Um, then he was in this court case with Mike Joyce. So that just bummed him out. Um, he was supposed to do an EP also in 1996 with Joe Strummer producing. That didn't happen. Um, so Morrissey was like, fuck it. Just fuck it. Let's just make this album. I'm done. So... We got maladjusted in 1997. Um, like I said, it's not bad. It's not bad. So let's talk about some of the, the highlights, in, you know, in this album. So the first song is called Maladjusted. And um, up until 2014, Maladjusted had the honor of being the only song to also share the title name of the album. Morrissey didn't normally do that. Um, it's not a bad song. It's kind of rocking good opener he still does that song live um then alma maters which is the second song on side one that was the big hit um it reached number 16 on the uk chart um it was the third highest charting single of his in the 90s which that's pretty big he had a lot of hit in the 90s so the fact that it was the third highest ranking one's pretty good um and it was his first top 20 single since 1994's the more you ignore me, the closer I get. Um, great song. Uh, the video is pretty good. You know, it has donuts and cats and skinheads. Because what else do you need in a great fucking music video? I don't know. Uh, but check it out on YouTube. A great song. Um, you know, I remember when this album came out in 1997. Um, I heard that song constantly. Like, every time I'd go into a Tower Records, I heard fucking Alma Mater. Um, also that 
was it Maybe Someday by The Cure? They always play that fucking song too. But anyways, big hit, great song, rightfully so, the biggest single on this album. Um, uh, let's see. Then, oh, oh, Trouble Loves Me is on this album. Yes, that should have been a single. It was not, but that was, it's clearly the best song on this album. To me, better than Alma Mater's. It's so fucking ballady and just, oh, you know, typical Morrissey songwriting and style. Great, great song. I highly recommend it, uh, especially if you want to get into my pants. Play Trouble Loves Me. I'll get there. Um, great song. Um, what else is good on here? Oh, so Morrissey, we released this album in 2009 on CD only uh, with a new cover, new packaging, and he left two songs off, songs that were totally meh. But um, either, you know, either way, it's still a great album. Uh, one of the songs he left off was Royce Keane, which he did release originally as a single off of this album. And um, Royce Keane is something of Morrissey legend and fodder. Because um, when they released it, they recorded a video of them lip syncing or performing it for Top of the Pops uh, to air eventually. Well, the problem was Royce Keane only went to 42. So... It didn't go on top of the pops. That's only for top 40. So um, it was never seen until 2003 when they did kind of like a retrospective of top of the pops. But um, yes, so what's the expression? Don't count your chickens. Well, don't count your chickens if you're Morrissey because, you know, that's meat. But anyways, don't count your chickens till your your vegan eggs hatch. Anyways, um, so that's Royce Keane. And Royce Keane's not even that bad of a song, I don't think. I It's catchy. I like it. Um, the other song that got left off was... Papa Jack, which we're not even going to talk about. It's not even that great. Um, the other great song on here is Sorrow Will Come to You in the End. And it is nothing but Morrissey bitching about how he lost that court case. Um, it's him talking and he's angry and rah, and you hear fucking gavels and he's talking so much shit. Um, so much shit that the UK version of this album did not have that song on there because they consider it... Um, libel and I think because the court case is still going on or the appeal or whatever so uh, it wasn't on the UK version not virgin version sorry um until 2009 but it is on this one because I have the American version so uh it is on here great song um the only other single that was released is uh Satan Rejected My Soul which I know what you're saying you're like but wait Morrissey I thought there was a place in hell for you and your friends. Uh, obviously not, because Satan was like, get the fuck out. So anyways, that hit number 39. So that barely squeaked by, um, you know. So, and, and that was the last song he released in the 90s. Uh, he didn't release anything else until You Are the Quarry, which was in 2004. Um, this record's pretty boring on the inside, too. Nothing great. Um, it does have a lyric sheet. And there's a quote by Sir Anthony Newley. Although at this time, he was just Anthony Newley. He wasn't knighted yet. And he gets a, a shout out and a thanks. But um, it's all right. not, no big deal. Uh, I would recommend getting it. I, I think at the time, it was kind of poo-pooed. But um, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Is it his worst album? No. But I'm trying to think what is his worst album. So let me know what you think. I know some of you Morrissey fans are going to be like, but there is no worst album. Morrissey can do no wrong. That's not true. That's not true. And I always say, to be a true fan you got to be a real fan and real fans admit the truth so um and I know what you're thinking you're like god you know a lot about Morrissey are you just like well I should I wrote a fucking book about it anyways yeah I wrote a Morrissey book who would have thought anyways uh check it out it's Morrissey FAQ uh, I think it's I you know I try to put a little bit of humor in there and I definitely tell the truth um, about a lot of stuff, but it's a good read. It's a good, easy, fun read. Available now on Amazon.com. So check it out. And anyways, um, that's it. So anyways, thanks for watching. I will take requests, um, as long as it's not seven in the Ragged Tiger. And uh, we'll see you soon. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my videos. And from me to you, from squatting Morrissey to you, from Morrissey's hair to you, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon on the next Smart and Vinyl. Thanks. Hey guys, D here. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Smart and Vinyl. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Because if you don't, Morrissey's going to get really sad. Really, really, really sad.
really, 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 really sad. And maybe hangry because he doesn't eat meat. But definitely really, really sad. See you next time.